Today on Homeschool Together, we're going to be taking a look at the third grade science extension from Blossom and Root, Wonders of the Prehistoric World. This is $21 for a parent guide and a student notebook, and each week she's going to take you through a range of activities that you can tailor to your learning, learner's style. So there'll be some minimal spine books, and then there'll be extra books for those folks that love books, those kids that love to dive into to literature. There'll be lots of media for families that have visual learners. There'll be outdoor activities for students who really want to get outside, some things for lab table experiments, and then some ideas for crafts, and finally a student notebook. Overall, this is a really comprehensive prehistory curriculum. We really enjoyed this and think it would make a great addition to your homeschool journey. So let's dive in and take a look inside. So let's get started taking a look at the parent guide. This is Wonders of the Prehistoric World. I just printed it, put it in a clear view binder. And if you take a look here, we'll just go right into the philosophy of this curriculum, which I think is really important to go over. So this is about wonder. So she says here, setting the stage for discovery. So there'll be multiple categories that will introduce the different topics to your student and kind of help inspire them, right? The, the primary goal of this stage is just to introduce it and to make our learners be really curious about it. And this is where we get into the different flavors that you can do depending on what your learners like. So for each week she has for the minimalist. This is if you're short on time or short on resources, you don't have the ability to buy tons of books um, or aren't as excited about that unit. You can just do this kind of basic, it's a few uh, basic spine books. And then there's for the folks who love books and are running to the library like we are, then you can look at all these extra books that she has. And then for visual learners, she has a terrific list of YouTube videos from PBS Eons, which are fantastic. So this whole initial step of each week is about wonder. The next step is to explore. So the goal here is to allow your child really to have the opportunity to make discoveries about whatever topic they're learning about. So we're providing some rich and engaging activities. So you can get outside, you can do some table science work and do some arts and crafts. You can do all or some of these. What I really love about Blossom and Root is that she has given so many ideas you can just find what works for your family and that might not be the same thing week to week. Some weeks the weather is beautiful and you really want to get outside and explore the outdoor learning. Uh, other weeks you just really, everyone's got a cold and you want to cuddle up and watch media. So there's different uh, exercises depending on what makes most sense for you that week and that topic. So this is the explore step. And then the third step is to record, and this is where we get into using the student notebook. There's also some other options here, which is to have your child give a brief oral narration of what they've learned this week. They can do a written narration, or you can do some scrapbooking. Uh, you can take pictures. I think that this is pretty open-ended, but you're just documenting the journey that you're going on. I love that she gives this permission to go on off grid and follow the rabbit trails. That's what homeschooling is all about. And I love that she's given a reminder here that it's okay to deviate from this plan. Uh, if you've got something really great that your learners want to go after, then follow that rabbit trail. So here's the table of contents. This is what you're going to be covering. So we start with Precambrian life and we move all the way through. And I, I love that there's four weeks here before we're even going to talk about dinosaurs. We learned so much in these initial few weeks that honestly, our public school educations had just skipped. So this is a really great section. And then she's going to go into what is a dinosaur in week five. And you're going to be studying dinosaurs for like the next six weeks. So this is a really significant middle portion of the curriculum where you're going to be going just very deep into dinosaurs. So if you have a dinosaur loving kiddo, uh, this is really going to work out nicely. And then we're going to be talking about the last ice age and a little bit about the rise of humankind. We do have to say that the rise of humans isn't a, uh, a main point of this. This is really more about the rest of life. And this is just kind of, this is the very ending piece here. Um, this is the reason that we went ahead and combined Build Your Library's unit study on prehistory with Blossom and Root because Build Your Library focuses more on humans and Blossom and Root focuses more on dinosaurs and pre-dinosaur life. So, um, but if you want to just do this one, I think that there's plenty here and you could always bulk up this section if you want to do some more studies about 
uh, ancient humans before you go into some of the first civilizations, uh, this is some, a section that you could always add more to should you want to. So this is the main table of contents. And now we'll go ahead and get into the book list. And I'll show you a couple of the books after we run through this walkthrough. Um, but there's going to be a few main books and she tells you when they're used, which I really appreciate because you know, you know, this one, for example, the DK Smithsonian dinosaur book is something that you're going to use every single week. She calls Weeks Wonders here. So uh, every wonder you're going to use this book. So that's a good one to purchase and it is also a fabulous book. Uh, and then she tells you these other books are only going to be used uh, in certain weeks. She also provides an optional book list and some other resources so that you can decide if you want to bulk certain sections up, then you have some other ideas. So let's go ahead and look at a specific week. So here we are at the Carboniferous and Permian Life Week. So this is the way that every wonder or week is scheduled in this curriculum. There are the big picture messages to focus on during the unit. We love this part of it. This as parents gives us something that we can read and go, oh, okay, so we're learning through this. And these are the things we want our students to really take away from this week. So this gives us a great overview of what's most important because these are big and sometimes complex topics and hard to get our mind around. So it's really great to have information here about exactly what we're supposed to be emphasizing and we want, what we want to make sure that our children really understand. Next, we go into the different sections. So we talked about for the minimalists. So here's discussing the big picture messages, which we already read. So then you can kind of paraphrase and talk with your learner about those big picture messages. We're going to read from the main few spines, in this case, the dinosaur book, the story of life, and which is also a fabulous book, and the first four billion years. So we're going to read through all of those. And then you can decide if you want to go on or not. If you're a book basket family, you love the library, here's another couple of books that you can read. If you're a visual learner, this is PBS Eons. Now, while she has this linked from pbs.org, we found all of these videos freely available on YouTube. So if you have a YouTube premium subscription and so you don't want to watch ads like you'd have to on PBS, these are free on PBS, but you do have to watch ads, uh, you can go over to YouTube for these. We found these PBS Eons videos were absolutely fantastic. The fact that they're all linked here, we know exactly where we need to go and what um, we would just search for these names in YouTube for, for these different episodes. This was fantastic. These videos are great. They're totally on point. There's also another couple of videos that you can watch. Uh, so she gives you lots of media options and this really helped bring these concepts home for our learners. Going on, we've got the options for exploration. So here's the outdoor learner. This is talking about these giant dragonflies and it gives you all kinds of materials that you might need to make your own um, mega neura wings. I'm probably saying that wrong. So these are what you need to gather and here's what you need to do. Whenever she gives materials, they're always readily available materials. We're not running to the store for these things. So I think that it's very accessible. Um, so this would be an outdoor, kind of an outdoor craft project. And then for the table lab, uh, lab crowd, which I, I think is pretty cool for those rainy days, especially here in the Pacific Northwest, this is to make a salt dough map of Pangea. So it gives you all the materials that you need, how you're going to make it. You can do an image search so you can find what this looks like. So this is a great kind of hands-on activity. And then for arts and crafts families, you can make some models. This is something that she does in a lot of the weeks, which is basically you can take modeling materials and you can make, you know, air clay models or whatever, and you can make models of the creatures. This to me, this last section here is the one section that I didn't think was as fleshed out as the rest of this. All of these other activities for the outdoor activities in the table lab, those were all really different in each of the weeks and I thought really well thought out. The arts and crafts projects for the most part in this curriculum we notice are just you can make models and you can make models with various types of me mediums, which we did and we did enjoy, but there, there wasn't the, the depth of um, uniqueness each week in this number six here. So know that if you're an arts and crafts family, um, that there isn't a lot of this. Although I would say that a lot of the table lab work and even the outdoor work would follow, qualify under arts and crafts as well. So I don't think if you're an arts and crafts family that you're not going to find things to love, but I just do want to be clear that 
for us, we found that most of this was about modeling, um, which we thoroughly enjoyed, but know that going into it. And then the next part is to complete the student notebook, which I'll show in a moment. Um, and at the end of each section, she gives these great quality color photographs so that you can put this together for your learner and they can you know, have a picture in their mind of what these look like. So let's jump over and check out the student notebook. This is the student notebook for Wonders of the Prehistoric World. And as you open it up each week, there's going to be a different exercise. Some of them like which one of these is not a dinosaur. Um, there's lots of opportunities to draw pictures, name the life form. So this are, these are mostly drawing pages. Uh, like I showed, there's, you know, sometimes there is an activity what I look like as a paleontologist. Uh, this is really uh, pretty basic. There's not a ton of activities in here. It just gives some freeform uh, opportunities for your learner to record what they've learned. And we were sometimes surprised at the things that our daughter really took away from the week. It wasn't the thing that stood out to us, but it really stood out to her. And it helped inform us as we went along uh, which things she was really most into. So that's the purpose of this student notebook. So let's go ahead and check out some of the books. So the main spine that you'll be using through most of this study is the dinosaur book. This is a DK Smithsonian book. It is absolutely fantastic. Um, this just really focuses on different uh, categories of dinosaurs and talking about all of their different characteristics. Really great high quality color photos or, or uh, computer renderings that are really terrific. Um, so our daughter loved this and this gave a great view. It's not just dinosaurs, but there's a little bit on prehistoric life at the beginning, trees and things too. So this is the main spine, which we really enjoyed. Next, we also used the DK Smithsonian dinosaur, exclamation point. Um, so same group, but this one's a little bit different and this focuses more on a specific animal and all about them. So this is a little bit more detailed, doesn't focus just on the category, but, on, but this is on each specific animal itself. This is a terrific book, which we really enjoyed, highly visual for our learners. So that was a great one. We also used Where on Earth Dinosaurs. This is terrific. Uh, this is Dinosaurs and Other Prehistoric Life, uh, which uh, this is great because it gives us a view of where they lived. So in North America, for example, it shows where these different prehistoric creatures called home and all about them. So this is great because it just brings in that map element uh, and gives us a sense in the world of where they lived and now, of course, where we find their fossils. So this was terrific. And then there was a great evolution book, When the Whales Walked. Um, which is all these different evolutionary journeys. It does a good job of explaining evolution and trying to give us a sense of the timeline here. So this has got some great information about all kinds of different animals and how they evolved. So this is a terrific book as well. So I hope that was helpful for your family on your homeschool journey. As I said, our family did this curriculum and we really enjoyed it. In fact, we coupled it with another curriculum and did a huge 16-week uh, prehistory study. You can find a YouTube video a playlist down below where you can see all about all the books. We added extra books and extra activities and things, and you can follow along if that's something that interests your family. Overall, this is a really comprehensive curriculum. We thought it was terrific. It leaned heavily into the science, which was awesome. We learned as a family so much more about prehistory than we had ever known, and we felt like we had a good grounding in it afterwards. I will say that this is for third grade, and it really should be for third grade. We tried to do it with a first grader, and there was a lot of um, different considerations that we had to make. This is pretty heady stuff. In fact, it may even be a bit much for even a third grader, but I think it's important that we just expose our kids to these different concepts, even if they don't understand absolutely every piece. Um, this is pretty dense. There is a lot here, um, but it's really fun. I think the main drawback from this one is that you really will want to uh, totally engage with the science. So if 
it's something you don't have time yourself to get in and dive in and understand, this probably wouldn't be for you. I think this is something that uh, parents have to be really involved. This isn't something kids would do independently. You have to be ready to dive in, understand those big picture messages so that we can explain them to our kids in a way that they can understand because this, these are complex um, topics. This is a large timeline. Speaking of which, this does not have a main timeline activity, which would be a really fun addition to make to this so that our kids can try to understand the scale uh, of this of these time periods it's it's just mind-boggling it was something that was really hard for us to wrap our heads around overall though I think this is terrific for 21 bucks 13 weeks uh, tons of good information in here tons of activities I didn't feel like we had to um, balloon this I thought every week was just jam-packed with lots of things and I love the ability to pick what works for our learners that week or you know overall with their learning style I love that it gives us so many options but is still prescriptive with those options it's not a free-for-all of oh go do whatever you want if this appeals to you or that appeals to you it really gave um, good uh, specific information if that's what your learner needs for example media it gave just such a great listing of all that so we really appreciate that it gets our recommendation blossom and root as always does a terrific job so we hope that you check it out